Welcome back to the Xamarin Forms tutorial where we work on a time tracker app. I am Patrick and this is the Let's Create series. Before we jump into today's tutorial, I want to take a moment to direct you to the Let's Create series blog where I post articles about mobile apps and game development. In this blog, you can find a few helpful tutorials related to Xamarin Forms and Roblox, including some smaller bite-sized learnings about things like a scroll-aware header in Xamarin Forms and a custom health bar in Roblox. And if you haven't done so yet, head over to the blog at letscreateseries.com, check out some of the tutorials, and subscribe to the blog to get notifications when new articles are posted. To continue where we left off last time, we're going to want to work on the UI for the time clock page, and one of the things that we might want to do is set these light blue colors to something in our application resources. So to create an application resource, a color resource, let's head over to app.xaml. And inside of this application.resources, we can start defining some application level resources like colors and things like that. So let's start with some colors. To define a color, all we need to do is make a new element and call it color. And we need to give it a key. And we'll name this one our primary header color. And then we simply need to define some kind of value. So in here, one of the colors I really like are this pretty dark blue color. And then we're set to go back to the time clock page so I want my labels in the header to have white text. So we can do that by going inside of the label attributes and define a text color. And we can just say white. And we're going to do that for all of the labels in the large header. So we can do it to the running total, the current start time, and all three of the labels in the stack layout. So start, end, and total. And now with Xamarin Hot Reload, if we just open our emulator, we'll see that the text colors updated, but the background colors didn't. And that's because we're not using those resources yet. We still have light blue declared. So we need to change this to use our static resource in our application resources. And we can do that by replacing light blue with static resource. And then we can just use the color name that we defined as a key. And so that was primary header color. So we'll copy that from here and we'll also replace this light blue at the bottom. And now when we save, our app should update and we have this really nice blue color. I also noticed that our earnings today at the bottom is not white yet. So let's go ahead and update that. We'll scroll down to the label that's at the bottom, today's earnings, and we will update that to have a text color of white. And when we save and check out the app again, we'll see that the text color was updated in our app. And so this is starting to look much, much better. But now we have this clock in button and this clock in button is the normal default button and we don't want that so at the very least let's go ahead and change its background color to a basic white and we can do that by in the attributes we can just say background color is white and when we save and run again or just check again we'll see that the clock in button has a white background and it's got this very minor but noticeable rounded corner and so it looks good and now the next thing we might want to do is update our action when we click the clock in clock out button so when we click the button it changes the text from clock in to clock out and then back to clock in when we click again so let's head over to the time clock page model and let's do a simple boolean flag to keep track of if we're clocked in or if we're clocked out so let's just make a private bool and say is clocked in is fine and it will default initialize to false. So that's good because we're not actually clocked in until we click clock in. And so when this action is run, so on clock in out action, we will just check to see if is clocked in, then we'll set the text. So we have that button model and we can just set its text to clock in because if we are already clocked in, then we're going to clock out. And then the next time we tap the button, it will be clock in. So we're going to set it to clock in else 
we'll go ahead and set it to clock out and then we'll just toggle our flag so is clocked in equals not is clocked in and that's just a simple flag toggle and now we can run our app and we'll log in with any random username and password and now when we clock in when we click clock in the text should change to clock out and when we click it again it should change to clock in and so this is simply just reacting to the click and toggling a flag and then setting the text accordingly. But when we do clock in, we want to actually set this clocked in time so that it keeps track of when we clocked in at this specific time. So let's go back to our page model. And if we scroll up, we'll see that we have this current start time. With this current start time, we can set it to the moment you tap clock in and it will update the value inside of that label. So we can say, current start time equals date time dot now simply that and so when we stop and rerun our app and we do a sample login now when we clock in we should see that this 12 o'clock a.m changes to the current time of 705 and then when 705 turns to 706 and we clock in again we should see that it will update to 706 and then when we click clock out nothing will change but when we click clock in again we should see the time updates to 706 perfect so now we'll head back to the page model and we only want to show this you clocked in at when we are actually clocked in. And so we just made a Boolean that can keep track of that. We just need to make it bindable. So we'll just make a public variant of this and we'll call it is clocked in and it'll follow the same pattern. We'll just return the private member. And then when we use set, we'll just do set property with the method we created and reference the private member and pass in value. And now that we have this and it's bindable, instead of using the private member, we should use the public one. And we'll just toggle it this way. And so this way, when it's updated, it'll notify the page. And so we'll jump back to our time clock page. And now we'll just say this is visible, is bound to that property. And so the you clocked in at label, we'll just say is visible binding is clocked in and we only want it to be visible when you are clocked in and so now when we rerun this we should see that it's not visible until we clock in and then when we do click clock in it'll be visible and when we clock back out it'll disappear again so let's go ahead and log in with a fake username and password and we see that our label is no longer there and when we click clock in it moves the view down and it says you clocked in at 707 and then when we clock back out that view should disappear but now we want to keep track of when you clock in and when you clock out. So let's head back to the page model, time clock page model. And we already have this observable collection that we created earlier. And this has a list of work items. And so if we go to view declaration or go to declaration, we'll see that it's got a start and an end. And then total is just calculated for us. So if we jump back to the page model, we can unclock out so if is clocked in when you click it then that's a clock out action we can just simply add a, a new work item to the collection or insert it at the top so we can just say work items dot insert and this will be at index zero so we'll put it at the top we'll create a new work item and we'll set some properties so start time equals current start time and is date time dot now and then total is calculated for us. So we can just end that there. And this should pop start populating our list for us. So if we stop the app again and rerun it, we'll log in with a fake username and password again. And now when we clock in, we'll see that we clocked in at 709. And we can clock out again at 709 is fine. And we should see that start at 709. Oh, now we're at 710. So we start at 709, we end at 710, but our total is still only going to be a couple seconds. We need to probably provide some string formats to these because it is using the system to string. So we have 6, 11, 20, 20, 7, 0, 9, 55, 2, and the end is 6, 11, 20, 20, 7, 10, 0, 8, and the total is about 12 seconds. And so when we clock in again and we clock out, it just adds another entry at the top. And we clock in again and we clock out it adds another entry at the top your most recent clock in clock out will be at the top of our list but what we need to do is format these strings so that they just don't look so cluttered like this so let's head over to the time clock page since this is just a running total of today because summary will include past work we don't really need it to show the date so we can just format these strings so binding start and string format we can pass in a zero 
So just like we did up top, uh, but we'll pass in a format string. And so the format string will be the hour, minute, second, AM or PM. So just like we did up top. So hours, minutes, we can go ahead and do seconds. We didn't do seconds at the, at the top, but we can do seconds here. And we'll do the same thing. So just copy the string format and paste it in behind end. And then total, we're going to want to do pretty much the same string format as we have in the running total. So we'll copy it from the running total and we'll paste it behind total. And now when we run our app, we should see it's a, it's a little more cleaned up. So if we clock in, we clocked in at 712. When we clock out, we're only a couple seconds later, but now it's just so showing the 71229 to 71233, and we have a total of three seconds. We can make these align by changing the fill and expand the same way we did the, the title bar up top. And so we can change fill and expand to center and expand on each. Save, there's, there's no need to rerun. We can just open the emulator and we can see that those are centered in their available space. However, we do notice that because these take up more space, because they have more characters, this one isn't given the same horizontal width. And so we have a couple options. And the one we might end up doing is using a grid that will space these out equally using star. But for now, we're going to leave it the way it is. But we are going to change these labels to be vertically centered as well. So we can go to each of these and say vertical options equals center and expand. And we'll just copy this and paste it into each one of these. Now when we save, we should see that the labels are centered inside of their respective rows. And so that, that looks great. So now we can clock in again. Uh, we can wait a couple seconds and we can clock out. And we'll see that that gets added to the top of the list. And it was another three seconds. That's pretty good. And now we have a running total on our time clock page. Some things we're missing are updating the earnings today and the icons on our dashboard. I think that's a good stopping point in this video. We'll work on those in the next one. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments section. This is Patrick from the Let's Create series, and we'll see you next time.